Remember that it all started with hot spots. Hot spots punched through the surface of the earth and covered the now ocean that was basically growing around the earth with isolated pieces of land that were stretched over the surface of the earth. So as the crust formed, volcanoes punched through this crust and made bigger and bigger mountains in this volcano, whether they were covered with water or not. But as the continents were covered with water, only these big hot spots actually were able to protrude above the sea level to become later on called the continents. And we, basically, as these hot spots travel because of plate tectonics in processes that look kind of the same way as the processes that happen today, and these pro these things will end up hitting each other. Now, when they hit each other, like we talked about before, when we talk about the idea of continental margins. Some, sometimes the big one island arc does not necessarily um, hit another. And you see, by, by the way, an island arc forming there, and another one forming here. So when these island arcs come towards each other, they actually sometimes end up fusing together and form large mountain chains. For example, that's how we think that Appalachian Mountains formed when North America and Europe collided during the formation of Pangaea. And so when two large pieces of continental mass hit each other, the subducting plate continues to go under, but sometimes the material that was in the oceanic plate gets added to the, to the other plate, forming a larger, larger plate, and that's what actually ends up building continents over a period of longer, long period of time. And then you end, got, get, end up getting something that looks like this. And notice that you can use paleomagnetism to figure out how old each of those pieces are because you're going to have alternating pieces of rock in that land. Just like they, they, are, they form in the ocean with different magnetic bands, you can follow these magnetic bands and you can also use that to, to look at the orientation of where these bands are. So when you study geology and the formation of the continents, we look both at rock formations and how they can possibly fit together in the continents and at the paleomagnetism to try to orient the pieces and try to figure out how they would, would fit together a long time ago. We'll talk more about this when we actually do the supercontinent cycle. But remember, this process, we call this the accretion process, and this is how continents actually grow. Now, you see here some of the early evidence for the pieces that we are talking about. The first continents were just isolated pieces of rock that pretty much got together. And this started about 3.0 billion years ago with Ur, and then later on Arctica, later on Atlantica, and then Arctica changed further by accretionary processes into a bigger continent called Nina. And then all these continents got together into a larger continent called Columbia, which then changed and got together to form Rodinia, which is the first true supercontinent that formed on the Earth. And you see a representation of that on this picture over there. Now, I'll talk about this a little bit more when I do the supercontinent cycle. So for now, just understand that these pieces that form through hot spots in the surface of the Earth travel around the world because of the plate tectonics. And because the world is a sphere, they inevitably ended up hitting each other, forming larger continents. And each large continent travel around the surface of the Earth because of plate tectonics and because the Earth is a sphere, inevitably they hit each other. And so you end up getting these large supercontinents. And we'll talk about that when we do the supercontinent cycle.